Okay, welcome to another StreamZ community call. This one for the 27th January. And the first point on the agenda are questions and issues. Uh, if anyone has anything what's not on the agenda they want to discuss, then uh, now's your chance. And if as usually nobody has anything, then we can move to the open PRs and issues. I edit two PRs there. One is this uh, fix from Federico Valeri to the, to the report tool uh, that's waiting for review. So if someone can uh, have a look at it, and another one which I edit, which is waiting for a view or two that is relatively shortly. It's this fix to the Helm comments where we have in the example slightly bad values. That should be simple to review because it's really one line change or two line change, one line change. So if someone can have a look at that as well. Anyone have any other PRs or issues they want to discuss? If not, then the next thing on the agenda are the open proposals. I don't think there were any changes since last time around the proposals. What I just wanted to raise uh, is, so I opened this proposal about this restricted pod security profile, but the more and more I think about it, the more I seem to be convinced that enforcing the restricted security by default would be nice, but if it means having separate installation files for OpenShift and Kubernetes and keeping that in all the docs, I'm not entirely sure whether that's worth it. So yeah, in the rejected ideas, I kind of was thinking about having instead some value like streams security profile equals restricted which could be used to activate this and uh, yeah i'm really more and more thinking if this is the better way to go so yeah to be honest um we'll probably spend some more time thinking about it but uh it might update it i don't know how others feel about it but the more nights I sleep on it and dream about all the users asking about why the installation doesn't work on OpenShift because the restricted profile doesn't match OpenShift, the, the more of these nightmares I have, the more I don't want to set it by default probably. So I have to, to take a look at this uh, proposal. Uh, I didn't read that yet, but it's about, uh, it's kind of something new on Kubernetes. It's, uh, it's new in Kube 123, it reached the beta stage when it's kind of activated by default, but it doesn't necessarily by default enforce anything. So the plugin is basically running by enabled by default, but by default, unless you add currently some additional configurations, you don't, it does not enforce anything, but otherwise it works basically similarly to the SCC profiles in OpenShift that if you would just try, if you, if you use it and you say you can run only restricted pods, then basically if you would try to run something what's using root and, uh, and so on, then it would basically not allow you to create such pod and you need to follow all the different rules to kind of harden the, the, the pods to be able to run on such clusters. So it's kind of a similar functionality, but unfortunately it's not 
compatible at this point. So the policy which you need to pass the restricted profile on, on Kubernetes with default settings doesn't pass the, rest, the restricted uh, SCC and OpenShift. And that's where the main problem is that if you would want to do the, the restricted profile by default, then you are basically running into issues that when someone runs it on OpenShift, it would not run out of the box. And for the operands, you can kind of detect it and change it in the operator. That's no problem. But for the operator installation, you would basically need to deal with it by having two different set of installation files or the people on OpenShift first editing the security context before installing it and so on and so on. Yeah, which is not the case when you use OLM for installing the, the operator, right? Uh, actually, the OLM installation, that's the easy part because it is separate source for Kubernetes and separate source for OpenShift. So you can actually customize it in the OLM, in the CSV files. Oh, but right. when you install it with Helm chart or with YAMLs, that's where you would need to have either two set of the files or you would need to change it. Anyway, maybe read the proposal and uh, let's see what you think about it. Yeah, okay. So just to be sure that uh, I don't waste my time, you mean that you are going to uh, to make some changes on the proposal or to think about the proposal in, in a different way? I'm thinking about it. But another opinion would be useful. Okay. I will take a look then. And for the guys in the chat, if you don't dream about your open source project, you are not committed enough to it. Okay. Anyone wants to talk about some other proposal? In that case, there are some points I added to the agenda for which we probably don't have enough people to update, but the first two should be fine. So we created these configuration providers, this NVAR configuration provider and the Kubernetes configuration provider. They are now out for some time. Uh, there didn't seem to be any major complaints. So I would maybe suggest to move them towards the 1.0.0 release. Uh, there should be some dependency update and so on first, but uh, uh, yeah, I think we should do that and then we should do the 1.0.0 release. Does that sound reasonable to everyone? Yeah, it's fine with me. And then the next point which I added is before the Christmas, I promised to organize some bug triage calls and enhancement triage calls. I apologize for not being able to do it yet in January uh, because I was busy with other stuff, but hopefully I get to it during February. Hopefully I managed to set up the first call for next week. So that just an update and apology about it from my side. I've been going through the doc issues. I think um, when you first mentioned this, we had 21, so we're down to five now. Yeah, I think you managed to clean the doc issues uh, yeah. quite significantly, which is not necessarily the case for the bugs and for the enhancements, there's a lot of stuff which needs bigger discussion than just 
a simple decision. But yeah, that was good job around the dock issues. Okay, and then I also added to the agenda discussion around incubation and around the survey. But I don't see neither Tom Bentley nor Jakub Stayskal who were looking into these things on the call. So I guess there's no discussion or update on this topic at this call. Oh, Tom Bentley just joined because we mentioned him. Yeah, I can hear. No, sorry, I'm late, folks. Yeah, no worries. You come just in time. I was just <laughs> wondering how much we moved forward with the incubation, which was what you were looking into. Was it? Damn. <laughs> from, <laughs> from my surprise tone of voice, you might guess. Um, that that completely dropped off my radar for which i apologize okay um what what was the ask exactly there's not really any specific ask uh it's more yeah i guess we didn't move much since last time, but maybe we should. Okay, so basically figure out what what steps we need before we open the PR saying, can we join the incubator? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I recall we had that meeting with uh, Chris, didn't we? And it sounded like, um, yeah. There wasn't that much we really needed to do. Um, okay, I can go away and look at that. Uh, so one of the things which I remember from it is that uh, it might take some time. To get through the queue. Yes. So might be. Good to open Good the PR sooner rather than later start sooner rather than later yeah Tom if you need any help let me know if you want to share the paints for this thanks Paolo Good we have another volunteer we can assign this to okay yeah leave that with me I'll try and have some sort of response for next time Let's call it prepare a plan. OK, I guess that's the end of the agenda which we have in the in the doc. Does anyone have anything else to discuss? Otherwise, this will be one of the faster calls. Is um, the proposal pull request there the CA abstraction one? No, that's the uh, restricted pod security policy. Okay. Uh, there, I don't think there were any significant changes on the CA one. So no, I, I need to bring I it up to, into the agenda. Yeah, no, I need to look at the um, the comments that you and Paolo left. Um, yeah. And I want to review it again in light of um, Paolo's recent fix to the um, CA certificate manual um, changes thing um, and just sort of get that pushed forward a little bit. But I've been struggling for time the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and in terms of the my proposal about restricted policies, I was just saying that I'm kind of less and less sure we should set it as default because I'm worried about impact on, on OpenShift if the installation files don't work there out of the box or or if we need to have two sets of files and so on. So uh, Paolo said he didn't read it yet, so he will have a look at it. And I need to do some more thinking if what I'm proposing there really makes sense or 
creates problems. I mean, presumably it's something that we could test to be confident that it wasn't going to cause problems. Well, uh, what's, what's I think it will cause there? problems, right? So, so you can have one set of installation files which will install on OpenShift and another one which will install on Kubernetes in the restricted mode. And that would cause us pain when maintaining the files separately, I mm -hmm. guess. And if you don't have separate installation files, then anyone on OpenShift would need to edit the files first. Yeah, that is a pain. To get it installed. So that's, that's also a pain. So I, I guess the question is whether that's something what we think is worth being more secure by default or whether it's better to go the alternative that we are not necessarily more secure by default, but we make it easier for users to, for example, say in some configuration, I want to follow this profile and make so it kind this... of easier for them to make it secure. Yeah, is this a long-term sort of difference between OpenShift and Kubernetes then, or is OpenShift going to sort of move, I, support this better in the future? I don't know. I can try to ask. Because it can't. We can't be the only people that are going to have this problem. There's, you know, there's lots of yeah, projects yeah. which want to work nicely on both. That said, it doesn't work on OpenShift 4.9 and earlier. So even if OpenShift changes, it might be a long time before we run out of old did, versions. We didn't want to do this right now, but in the future, yeah. we might change our minds. That's a fair point. I can try to ask someone from OpenShift. I think it would be useful. Yeah. OK. Sounds like a plan. Okay, anyone has anything else? Tom Cooper looks like he wants to say something. <laughs> not unless you, you want to hear an incredibly loud yawn, which is no, not the fault of this meeting, I would like to point out. It's been a long day. <laughs> okay, then uh, I guess we are finished for today. So thanks for joining. Thanks, folks. Thanks, folks. Bye -bye. Thanks, folks. Thanks Bye. very much. Bye. 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 See you. Bye.